In my previous video, I showed you some of the do's and don'ts of hosting reels. People always ask me for examples of a good hosting reel, so I want to show you a reel in its entirety from a great host, Brian Corsetti. I also talked to the owners of Open Door Productions in Los Angeles who make the majority of hosting reels out there, and we get a bit of advice from them. Welcome to Deadwood, South Dakota. I'm Brian Corsetti, and now it's time to start the great ride. For those of you who've been to the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally in August, first off, congratulations. You can check that off your bucket list. Welcome to the Primetime Emmy Awards. I'm Brian Corsetti, and in just a few moments, this red carpet is going to be packed with your favorite celebrities. I had this crazy idea. Take a truck bed, stand it on in, and put shelves in it. You're really going to have to work some magic. We're going to blow the doors off this place. So much bigger, better, and better that we can't even put it in words. I dig that. Victoria's Secret TV. I'm in the sh actually shopping for something for my girlfriend. Is this something that I could get her? Absolutely. Do you know her size? 32C, but I don't know. Like, is that a good gift to give a girl? I thought you were going to say, is that a good size? <laughs> Every second counts. There seems to be a new problem. Time is ticking away, and the All-Star team is scrambling to get this car done. Do the DB thing and put your fist in the air, because Jersey Shore has gotten picked up for a second season. And every original cast member is on board to return to MTV for more drama, more hookups, and more situations. Welcome, everybody, to School Bus Madness, your ultimate source for new and emerging sports across the country and beyond. All this action is fueled by Mountain Dew. I'm Brian Corsetti. I'm in MuniFest. I'm about to pass out. Will you catch me if I pass out? I will be there to catch you, I promise. It's like you steal my game sometimes, not gonna lie. <laughs> Carrie Ann, people say that I look like a cross between Bradley Cooper and Tommy McGuire, but I'm not going around <laughs> telling everybody that I'm related to him unless I know. Indeed. Walton, Vujicic, Teriaf, Farmer, they're all the X Factor heading into game number three. Two games in the book. At this point, who's your finals MVP? Okay, so my final it has to be Paul Pierce. You can make me laugh. That's a good thing. I wish we had more time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this party to stop. From the hot, steamy grotto at the Playboy Mansion, from the red carpet in Hollywood, I'm Brian Corsetti, doing something different on the Do Report. You're awesome, man. You're, you're good at it. For a chance to win, does it next to me? <laughs> I really like Brian's reel. It flows well, his opening montage is not too long, he incorporates stand-ups with interviews, and most importantly, he shows me that he can get down and dirty, but he also can work a red carpet. You know, demo reels are important. You need to have a solid demo reel. If you don't have one, make one up and make it look professional. It's all about the production quality. Two minutes, guys. You know, obviously, if you've been working, maybe three, nothing over that. You don't want to inundate the casting director or agents or managers with material. They're gonna see the first 30 seconds anyway. When you're just starting out, you're gonna to need to make up some footage so you can get jobs. People often put show names or logos in the corner like you see on TV, but you don't want to add too many of these logos or bugs because it can be distracting and take away from you. Some casting directors say that you don't even need a logo in the corner. Chances are we're going to know it's a made-up segment as it's not on your resume. Try to create a logo or a bug that fits a show idea you had or the name that you're, you're using on screen. Try to come up with a unique concept with your logos. Because the truth is, if you put Fox, if you have a meeting with Fox, they're going to ask you, hey, when did you work with us? And you're going to feel like a fool. When you're making your reel, it's essential that you're involved to some degree in making your reel. Doesn't mean you have to be there every step of the way, but you should be involved in the process. Now, when you're watching 10 stand-ups back, like you might be fixated on the way you have a double chin or, or the way, oh, you look so great in the light, but it might not be your best read. That's when it's essential to have somebody else's opinion that's unbiased just because of the way you look. Uh, that's where the partnership forms. Um, but it doesn't mean you have to be there for every single decision, but you do need to like check in on it at the very least, see rough cuts, give your opinion, because uh, you have to feel satisfied at the end. If you don't like it, you're going to hate sending it out to people. You're not going to want to send it to anybody. And you absolutely have to be happy and feel good that you're putting your best foot forward. So you need to have a partnership in, with your editor, basically. After you shoot your reel, it's essential that you have your footage because 
that's a great tool for you to learn. Um, yes, it's great so you have footage so you can actually make a reel, but even better, you can use that footage to watch yourself back. See if you have any interesting idiosyncrasies or uh, ticks, you know, if you start going like that, like you need, to, you need to change that. That stuff is a valuable tool to use. With demo reels, I find a lot of people try to make all their sections like meet and connect with each other. Like it's all just one big playful joke that all helps each other along. And that's fun, but sometimes, you know, your clips don't need to have that kind of, you know, attachment to each other. Okay. Music on your hosting reel is seriously important. With a popular film or a TV show, if the music has a strange break, it's abrupt, it's going to throw you out of the whole flow. You gotta make sure that your editor and you pick proper music for the clip, stuff that fits the actual genre of the clip, and make sure when the actual break or the transition's gonna happen, you maybe take the end of the song or maybe a breakdown or a little drum roll that's in the song somewhere and find a way to merge it there to the end of the clip just so that you have a nice smooth transition between cuts. Never use just one straight track through the whole thing. I know you might love Black Eyed Peas, but some people might hate it. So try to change it up. Try to give different feels per different clips because then it gives a chance for people to like your clip and opposed to the last one they just saw. Don't, don't be sentimental with your footage, all right? When you're updating your reel, it's not a trophy collection. Don't make it a 20 minute epic adventure. Put your latest and greatest up front. If they recognize clips up front and someone's already seen your reel, they're gonna think they're seeing the same old reel and they're gonna throw it in the trash. Give them something new to watch. I hope you enjoyed the segment. See you next time.